this single cylinder horizontal steam engine is I think representative of a sort of engine that would have been used in 1850, 1860, something like that in say a brick works and would have had some sort of rope pulley drive presumably to line shafting to drive uh, whatever mechanism. So the other day I bought a couple of um, casting sets, casting sets, Stuart casting sets. One set for the Victoria stationary steam engine and another set which is not shown here for the Stuart beam engine. I spent a very mucky day with various grinders and whatnot, cleaning out the casting sand and um, scale etc off these castings. I didn't video that because of all the dust going everywhere. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start on the Victoria engine by machining at least one face of the bed plate to get it nice and uh, flat. Having roughly cleaned the base of the Stuart Victoria bed plate on the belt sander and put it on the lathe bed um, there is actually no rot and although there are gaps and things underneath clearly it's, um, it's sitting down pretty square. Like most things in the workshop, the longest part of most operations is setting the thing up or the part in the first place. I've just about managed to mill the top of this bed plate for the Stuart Victoria in one hit. I decided to mill the top um, because after the sander the base sits down fairly flat, it's fine. So uh, when I finish this I shall turn it over and uh, just take a cut across the bottom to finish the mention. Very good. Because Stuart castings are so good, I've just been able to clean out the bore of the cylinder with some files uh, and a rough stone and I've made up a mandrel that's running true in this chuck with a rear centre and just actually effectively driven the cylinder casting onto the mandrel in order to clean up the two end faces so that I've got some reference surfaces. So that's what we're doing. Just need to go a bit steady and not take too heavy a cut. As you can see I made the um, mandrel a decent but not too tight dry fit in the rough bore. And that's good. The bore of the rough casting is slightly smaller at this end than that end. So I've done the big end first and I'm now just shaving the mandrel by a thou or so so that um, 
sorry, this end is the uh, bigger end. I'm just shaving the mandrel by a thou or so, so that I can drive this on in that direction. I machine the mandrel down by a thou or so, just to accept the slightly smaller end of the uh, rough cast cylinder bore. This just shows aligning the cylinder on the mandrel that I made in preparation to face off the other end of the cylinder. That's to say the other end from the one that I'd already machined previously. I didn't take any video of this part, but it just shows a simple setup for aligning the steam chest on the cylinder assembly and then drilling and tapping the cylinder to hold the steam chest and the valve cover in position. The cylinder assembly is almost finished. There aren't any gaskets under any of the uh, covers as yet. Nor have I made the slide valve to go into the steam chest. That might be the next job. But the holding down brackets have been fabricated. And the whole assembly has been bolted down to the bed casting using 3BA bolts. The drawing called for 4BA but 3BA suits my purpose better because I seem to have a surfeit of them and you hardly ever use 3BA so uh, I used four of them up so that was good. Things to watch out things to watch out for when doing this part of the assembly is that um, at the moment I've got an overlong um, rod screwed into the piston, piston rod and that's for the purpose of uh, it comes out really uh, to try and get the cylinder aligned correctly on the bed and the longer the rod the easier it is to detect any problems and in the same vein you need to make sure this rod is as uh, horizontal as you can get it and the clue to all this of course is that these brackets and the bolt holes on the end cylinder covers need to be correctly orientated so that you haven't got any uh, so that the cylinder is not leaning off at an angle or some such which uh, wouldn't stop the thing working but wouldn't look very pretty so uh, as far as I can see to my eye they don't look too bad so I'm going to call that good. The last major component I've got to make is the connecting rod to connect the crank to the cross heads. In theory uh, probably wants a bit of 5 8 by half inch steel, but I haven't got any. Uh, but I do have a bit of 5 8 square steel, so I've cut a bit of that off. And uh, we'll have to make this out of that. So there's going to be a bit of, fair bit of um, clunking on the lathe while we sort this out. Alright, what I've done there for... That is the one eighth hole for the little end. This is the marking out for the three eighth hole, which will be for the big end. And then I've also marked out for a three eighth hole, which will be the centre of the U shape. Uh, part on the little end so that's going to look like something like that I've also taken the opportunity to centre punch by eye really the end of the bar 
for chucking and centering purposes should that become necessary okay we've got the uh, basis for the connecting rod blanked out eighth hole three eighth hole for the big end and the slot milled for what will become the uh, Full corner drawing. So, uh, next step is to uh, start to profile the thing. So, I've got a connecting rod roughly shaped out. Um, these dimensions at this end are something like. I've got the slot put in for what will be the fork. This is too thick. It should only be about three eighths according to that drawing. I'm kind of undecided whether to thin that down now or leave that till last. The end will ultimately be removed, sawn off. The only reason I've left this bit on there is for centering purposes because I'm going to have to stick it in the lathe to turn this part down to the uh, to look like uh, to look like this way it's a sort of fish bellied arrangement on the connecting rod slight pain but it um, won't be too difficult um, I think what I'll do, I'll stick it in the lathe actually and, and turn turn this part, turn the fish belly part. See how we get on. I've changed my mind. I think I'm going to reduce the thickness of this part to something closer to the 3 8 final dimension that it's supposed to be. And I think I'll do that next in the milling machine before I take this to the lathe. Decisions, decisions. Oh dear. I have made a complete mess of trying to turn a sort of fish bellied uh, part of the connecting rod for this engine. It's a shambles doesn't look right at all. I mean in a way it's cosmetic but it's a very visible part of the engine so it ought to ought to be better than it is. So I've got multiple choices. I could just leave it as it is, fit it and try and forget it but really that's not an option. I could scrap the whole thing and uh, start again might work on the other end i might end up in the same sort of mess i've got into with this but it's an option and then the third option and i can think of a way of doing it i could try and fix this what to do i think in the first case what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to because it's almost finished fit this to the engine because I think this is dimensionally accurate, I'm going to fit this to the engine, make the bushes and things, just to check that there are no other errors that have crept in here, such as you know, the distance of the cylinder or the crossheads or something. So I will fit this to the engine and make sure everything rotates as I think it ought to. And if that's okay, then I think what I'm going to try and do in the first instance is to fix this appalling piece of turning so we'll see how we get on right i'm trying to finish off this fish bellied uh, connecting rod i've got this uh, homemade tail stock offsetting device which i found in my box that i made donkeys years ago for which purpose i do not know it's got a dead center in it uh, 
with a little dish and between that and the work just traps a, a ball bearing. In the headstock there's a dead centre and the work itself is placed between the dead centre that you can't really see which is in the headstock and the ball bearing. This dovetail arrangement is set over an indeterminate amount, I haven't measured it, don't know. Um, so that this rod now is running slightly, not parallel, if that's why you would describe it, to the lathe bed. In order to drive the work, I've got a really gash arrangement. This is a nut tapped about another 2 or 0 BA, can't be sure, with a screw through it and a, some very uh, dangerous looking packing, so don't put your fingers near it. Stop marking the work, and that is just uh, trapped against the work. And effectively, this nut provides a driving dog. And does it work? Well, I'm feeding in two thousandths of time, and yeah, seems to be all right. This little rod has caused me more trouble than the rest of this engine put together. Oh hum. Just don't put your fingers anywhere near that chuck, which you shouldn't do anyway, of course. But so here is the connecting rod remade, third attempt, um, with the fish belly shape that the drawing calls for. Approximately a quarter of an inch at the ends and uh, five sixteenths in the middle. Considering all the aggravation. I'm far from convinced it was worthwhile, but it's what the drawing called for, and it's what the sort of prototype looked like. So it's done. Having pretty much completed the original engine, I've done a quick air test just to make sure the thing turns over. That said, um, by the prototype photograph that I've got, it had quite an interesting piece of fencing, prototype bit of fencing around the, uh, the flywheel end. So I think I'll have a go at making some of that. I've got quite a large selection of 4BA round-headed screws. But what I actually want is some 4BA square-headed screws or bolts or whatever for my Victoria engine. The purpose of these uh, bits of shim um, is nothing much, but it just stops the uh, pullet block rotating and falling onto the milling table every time I uh, undo it to rotate it, it drives me nuts, so that's just to slightly support it. There we are then, batch of 4BA square headed bolts completed. And the fence is erected around the flywheel end as per the photograph I've got. And in my view, I'm not sure about the green colour mine, but I think it still looks quite nice. I used the square headed bolts both to erect the fence and also to attach, and it doesn't come out too well on this actually, but to attach a brass angle wall around the lower part of the base with the square headed bolts. 
my compressor is very small, I've mentioned that before, so I can't quite keep up with a one inch cylinder, but it seems to run very well really. I do like its chuffing noise. So for the time being, I'm going to call this engine uh, good, going to call it finished. Uh, I do have an idea to uh, make a homemade governor for it. Which I'll maybe come back to, but I'm going to make the beam. In, I'm going to make a beam engine next, so that's firstly identical. In much of the components are the same, so if I make a cover, I can make two of them. Um, this uh, very ungainly looking affair here is just a connection I've made, so that I can easily connect uh, my airline. Ultimately, um, really, this could do with a stop valve and uh, the governor will connect uh, the throttle in some fashion yet to be determined. A couple of pictures of prototype engines that would have been used in a colliery or maybe for some as ancillary power or a brickworks or something. Um, I don't regard myself as sufficiently skilled or proficient as to tell anyone how to do something. So this has not been a how-to video and I hope it hasn't been too long. And I hope that it may be of uh, some small interest to anybody who's interested in making these little Stuart engines.